Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to be talking today about momentum. Now, you've probably inevitably heard of this uh, physics phenomenon, like people saying, oh, this, this thing has lots of momentum, my car has lots of momentum, that running back has lots of momentum. And that's exactly, well, it's probably exactly what you think it is. Momentum is defined as uh, inertia. I've heard it defined as inertia in motion. So momentum, like inertia is how hard it is to get something to start or stop, so it's directly proportional to its mass. But what momentum is, it's, well, to find it, you take some, an object's mass times its velocity. That, that's how you find momentum. It's uh, sometimes referred to as inertia in motion. Now, something really interesting comes from momentum, and, and a lot of it comes from uh, Newton's second law. Uh, Newton's second law says F equals M A. Now, what's really unique is that this acceleration, you can replace acceleration because we all know that acceleration is how much your velocity changes per unit of time. So sometimes we can replace, because acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time, like this. So I'll replace acceleration with change in velocity, change in time, like this. And, and now what I'll do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by delta t. So I'll multiply this side by a delta t and this side by a delta t. And what that will do is that will get rid of this. And what you'll find is what's called the impulse momentum theorem. It's really just an extension of Newton's second law. So it'll be m delta v equals f delta t. And over here, you'll see our friend momentum, which is an object's mass times its velocity. It's actually more than that. What this is is its mass times its change in velocity. So this is called the impulse momentum theorem. So impulse momentum theorem. What this is saying is if you push on an object first if you push on an object for a certain amount of time, its mass doesn't change, but its velocity will. And I, I explain this in terms of like when you were a little kid, when you're on a hill. We all remember sledding. If you don't, oh, you had a very sad, sad upbringing. I tell my kids in Hawaii. You had such a sad upbringing. If you were to push on them, the longer you push on them, the, the faster they end up getting. So they accelerate if you push on them longer. And that's the impulse momentum theorem. Pushing on somebody longer, more time, more velocity change. More force, more velocity change. Pushing doesn't change mass. Masses always typically stay the same when we're talking about these things. There's a rare case I can't think of any off the top of my head, but... So, um, let's talk about units. The units for impulse are, believe it or not, Newton seconds. And you can see Newton seconds here. And the, the units for momentum are kilogram meter per second. And believe it or not, they're exactly the same. You can rewrite Newton seconds and kilogram meter per seconds because if, if you knew this or not, a, a Newton is a kilogram meter squared. Let's see here, what is it? No, kilogram meter per second squared. That's what a Newton is. And so if I multiply it by a second, this cancels this, and you'll see that the units are the same. Um, Let's see. Now this uh, 
sometimes you can write this like this. So this delta V can sometimes be written like this. F delta T equals M. Because remember, changing in velocity is VF minus VI. So sometimes we can write this as VF minus VI. So here's, here's what we got. These are our, our big things, like the impulse momentum theorem, which can also be written like this. But all of this stuff is just Newton's second law. in a different format. I just rewrote A, move the T over, blah, 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 of some fancy manipulation. No. Let me show you where this is. This is really, really powerful. This, this equation right here comes into effect all over the place. Um, let's try an example. Um, your book, there's uh, example problem one. So I'm, I'm looking in your book on page 232. At the top left, example one. What it has, it says, there's a 2,200 kilogram vehicle traveling pretty fast, and you can stop it in 21 seconds by gently applying the brakes. You can stop it in 3.8 seconds if you slam on the brakes, or you can stop it in a fifth of a second, 0.22 seconds, if it hits a concrete wall. What is the force exerted on the vehicle in each of these stops? So I've got my vehicle and it's going to be traveling this way and we can stop that in three different ways. Number one, we can stop this thing very slow over a long period of time. Right? They, they said that we can stop it in 21 seconds over a long period of time. Or we can ram on the brakes and stop it a lot quicker in 3.8 seconds. Or we can ram into a brick wall. and stop this thing in a fifth of a second. So, it asks what is the force exerted on each, how much force does it take to stop a car in each of these three scenarios? Just, I mean, in my mind, it's going to take a lot more force to stop a car in a fifth of a second than it is over a longer period of time gently applying the brakes. So my guess, I'm guessing that I'm going to get a really big number for force over here and a really small number. And what it is, is I'm going to apply my, um, a, my impulse momentum theorem up here. So I'm going to go F delta T equals M delta V. And that's how I'm going to approach each one of these things. So it says what's the force? And I know my time is 21 seconds. The mass of my car, they tell me, is 2,200 kilograms. And the change in velocity, it's going from 26 meters per second to zero. So I can just, instead of going VF minus VI, I could write final velocity zero. My initial velocity is 26. So zero minus 26, I get a negative. But you know what? Let's just say that my change in velocity, you're right, let's make negative that way. So my delta velocity will be a positive number, and it's just going to be 26. I'm going from 26 down to 0. So when you take out your calculator, 2200 times uh, 26 divided by 21. I get 2,700 newtons. And in case you're wondering, you can pull out your, I wonder how many pounds or tons that is. So you can go to your apps, science tools number four, uh, unit converter number two, force weight number eight, 
and you can go with 2700 newtons and we'll convert that to pounds first maybe so it's 600 pounds which isn't quite one ton so that seems reasonable like it's in the ball it takes 600 pounds to stop it in 20 like 26 seconds all right let's figure out how much force it takes to stop it very quickly Looking for my force, my time is 3.8 seconds in this case, 2200. The change in velocity is still, you're going from 26 down to 0, so it's still 26. So solving that, uh, 2200 times 26 divided by 3.8, uh, 15,000 newtons. Or, Changing 15,000 newtons into pounds. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting 3,000 pounds. So 15,000 newtons. Now we're getting into tons. Wow, we're at 1 1.6, 1.7 tons of force to do that. Okay, and let's find the last one. I already know what 2200 times 26 is. I'm just going to divide it by 0.22. This is going to be huge. 260,000. And that uh, is going to be nuts. 260,000 uh, newtons to tons is 29 tons. Woo! And this goes the opposite way. If you wanted to accelerate from 0 to 26 meters per second, which I don't even know what that is. Uh, velocity is number 6. 26 meters per second to miles per hour. That's 50. Oh, so we're going 60 miles an hour. This, all these things are going 60. So if you wanted to go 0 to 60 in 0.22 seconds, you'd have to exert 29 tons of force on the car. Or if you wanted to go 0 to 60 in 3.8, you'd have to exert 1.7 tons of force. And 0 to 60 in 21 seconds, only 600 pounds of force, so not even a, a ton. So this is the impulse momentum theorem. It's a very useful theorem, and a lot of times here's, what's hap here's, here's what happens when we start dealing with this impulse momentum theorem is... your mass is going to stay the same. So a lot of times you can say to yourself, hmm, if my, my velocity is staying the same too, because like in this last problem, you went from 26 down to zero every single time. So these two numbers are locked. Over here, so if my f time goes down, my force has to go up. So that's what happened in this thing here. My time went down and down and down, and my force went up and up and up so you can kind of make these generalizations now you can go the other way too if the more time you act on something the more time you act the less force it takes and this is this is really the key to airbags this is the key to saving lives and and not saving lives because you as a person as you slow down you can slow down very quickly or you can slow down over a larger period of time and if you slow down over a larger period of time, then the force goes down because the time went up, force goes down. You're going from 60 miles an hour down to zero, and you're going to keep the same mass. So you can adjust these two things. You can play. If you can exert more time on something, you have to exert less force. So I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you later.